We've brought in Pancherelo Chama and uh, Buizani Mbewe. Buizani, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. How have you been? I've been great. Uh, just yeah. the happenings at Arrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was watching you from the background, of course, full of emotions. Yeah, but I think this is football. These things happen. Yeah. yeah. And Punch, Pancherelo Chama, welcome to the show. Thanks, Augustine. Um, yeah, I'm glad to be here. Okay. Thanks for facing first. Boezani, how did you receive the news of Red Arrows releasing about more than 10 players? Then uh, Bruce Msakanya has moved to ZSK United. Yeah, first of all, it, this is not the first time we are hearing of Bruce uh, being tapped by ZSK United. They tried last season, but uh, the Red Arrows ex-co stood on their ground uh, because the priority is they, they, they wanted the player, of course, to, to go out of the country and not to, to, to strengthen um, the rivals. direct rivals. So I've, I've known this for, for, for quite two seasons now. But this time around, I think they realized there were no offers that were coming from outside. And the, the player really wanted some change of some sort. And uh, at the end of the day, for me, I think um, it is him pushing for this move. And at the end of the day, uh, Red Arrow sort of had no choice. Um, because the player really wanted to move and uh, try something else elsewhere. Unfortunately, it had to be Zesco United. So on that move, very bad news for Red Arrows. Practically bad. I had to talk about uh, last season. Red Arrows was Chamanga and Bruce Sakanya. And not that any one of them would have played without the other. They needed to be both on the pitch. So that is very bad news for um, for, for Red Arrows. But for Bruce and Zesco United, well, I, I think it's a very good news. The only thing that I'm looking at this move is, is it's a one-year loan deal. So he will help Zesco United qualify to CAF, and then he'll go back to Red Arrows and not play CAF. You understand? So <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite something that we should actually look at. So if anything, maybe Zesco will still be pushing for an extension to that contract. So that's what I think. But for the removing, I mean, for the releasing of the other 10 players, well, I talked about it last season. I think it was bound to happen. Um, Red Arrows for long, it has been a player that keeps their own players, no matter what form, they would only keep them because they are religiously following and they, um, there's this team that they are... They are men, you understand? Yes. So, so they, they are like family. So it was always difficult. Even when their form goes off, they will always keep them. Um, we don't really know what is going on in the background because there are players, when you look at the list, you will start asking yourself, why is that one released, you understand? But yes. um, ultimately, there should be something more than football. Because if it was only on football, we would have had uh, Jose still playing. Ivan Sumsonda. It's actually a shock of some guy because he has a lot of football in him. Yes. Yeah. So that those two clearly tells me to say there's something more than football. We'll have to find out, of course. But um, by and large, it's a good move. It could be Red Arrows is rebranding. What we don't have right now is who are the players that are replacing this scream of players that have gone. Of course, we know James Chamanga, if you don't know, has uh, extended, extended his contract. Yes. Yeah. So. So already you could see that um, we'll be building our, our team towards James, which shouldn't be the case because James was supposed to come in. It's and, aging. Yeah, yeah. He was supposed to come in and just help young players actually fit in. So those are what I would actually pick for now. Punch, do you think that uh, these players that have been released by Red Arrows, some of them overstayed and it was high time that they were moved on? I think so. Um... Some of the players have been there for as long as... Red Arrows have an interesting squad. I think they, they've got the biggest squad in Zambian football. They've got over 40, 50 players. And all they do is that they, if they don't release them, they usually send them on loan. So um, they've got so many players across the league on, on loan. I recall um, a couple of seasons in 2015, um, they got that Dan Suyuni. He, but by that time I was at Lusaka Dynamos, he came to Lusaka Dynamos, played really well in the first half of the season. Then second half, uh, Red Arrows wrote to Lusaka Dynamos saying that they wanted him and it, LD couldn't understand because he went back to Arrows and he didn't really play. So they've got this big squad, which I don't know how much they... Uh, I, I haven't at, um, attended an Arrows training session for a long time, but I wonder if all of them attend, if all 50 players, if they are not on loan, if they attend or some of them don't. So it is, I think it's a good idea to 
make the squad smaller. And there have been players who, um, in, in the squad, who I haven't seen for a long time. I think I saw Evans Musonda play one game this year. The, before that, the last time I remember him playing was 2017. Uh, Bronson Chama, I haven't seen him playing for quite some time. Um, uh, Joseph Zimbas, that's a surprising release. He, I think he played very well. I thought he maybe still has some years in football in him, but he's been with this then. Also, Roderick Zimba. So, um, but at the end of the day, if Red Arrows are to make a better team, then it has to, to take them to lead, let some players go and then see how they can build in those positions moving forward. Yeah. So, when you look at the beneficiaries, I think if you see, look at Zesco United now, they look like a team which is going to be playing continental football. Apart from these teams that are, are in continental, I think this United seems to be making headlines in terms of transfers. Yeah, of course. And uh, it just tells you how painful it is to lose out uh, in CAF. Okay, because currently, as things stand, uh, Zesco won't be playing CAF. Uh, it is Green Eagles, Forest Rangers, um, Napsa Stars, and of course the Broken Kana. I know we talk about that. Are, <laughs> it's something that we cannot run away from. They are broke and... I'm wondering how they're going to play. But the team that is actually very active in the transfer That's window good. is Zesco United, and you know exactly. This is what Zesco United does. Um, for long, they've had the same number of players. They realized last season they lost the calf slot because their players were tired. Immediately, uh, Anton Akum left that team. Um, the midfield, really, we, we realized to say they were relying on him. Kambole, immediately he left, we realized to say that uh, the passes that Jesse Wereware Were was getting was actually gone. So it, it was a team that needed a lot of refreshment. And we've seen, they've confirmed, the first uh, confirmed signing is that of Bruce Musakana. And uh, we are aware Isaac Shamujompa is joining. That without a doubt. I don't know if Punch is going to disagree. Uh, <laughs> Isaac is joining. Um, they are also um, depleting. They are also part of the team that is depleting Kana. Nothing against Kana, but Kelvin Muvanga Kampamba looks so close to be joining Zesco United as well. So you, you realize to say Zesco United have um, a mission to do, and their mission is not anywhere to get uh, uh, the ZSL. Okay, their mission is to get back into CAF because for now that's where they think they belong. And missing out into this one is a very big loss to them. So the intent to get back into the calf slots is very clear. Bruce Msakanya. Uh, and they followed him last season. They failed. You look at that distribution in the midfield, he would definitely be a, a very serious acquisition for them. Should they manage to get uh, Kelvin Mwanga Kampamba, of course they have to work on the behavior aspect of it. And George is one person who is, who is good at doing that. Yes. So you look at a team that is very serious with it. And uh, how I wish we were seeing this um, vigorous uh, approach to the transfer with other teams. Right now, it's only Zesco. And you won't be surprised for Zesco coming back into the league, winning the league, and of course getting back into the calf slots. So, Punch, when you look at uh, Zesco United and their business, with their, what they're trying to do with the football club, do you think they will be a very, very big threat when it comes to next season? Yes, they will. Uh, look, I think Zesco realized, you know, I'm, I'm of the view that had the league ended, Zesco would have still made it into Continental. So it's unfortunate the way um, the league ended. However, um, you can see that they, they, they've seen that there are players in the team who can't last past two seasons. There are veteran players who I feel Zesco may feel that, okay, they've done their part. I think um, probably Jacob Banda. This may be um, his last season, or if they may give him one more, Kondwani Mutonga. These are good players, who, but they've just, you know, they're, they're in their 30s. Um, and three or four other players, Mwape um, Muel as well, a veteran of the game. Um, so these players will be on their way out, but who do Zesco bring? So that's why they're being linked with um, uh, Bruce Musakanya, they're being linked with um, Kelvin Mubanga, but also um, internationally, they're being linked with a lot of players. They're being linked with Jack Tuisenge. The Gormahia, former Gormahia striker, um, I'm told that about three, four days ago, um, speculation has it that um, I don't know if he's the one who arrived or if his um, or if his representative arrived because apparently he shares the same representative with John Mark Makwata. Okay. So he came here to have talks. 
to join Zesco. Um, don't know how that one worked out, but they are looking for a striker. Um, there are a number of other strikers who Zesco United are, lo are looking at. Uh, Patrick Sib Sibomana, the, the winger as well, is also Rwandan. Um, Jamal Salim, this information I got from Sudan, that they're interested in. Um, he's a goalkeeper for, go uh, for Al Hilal. That they're interested in, in him, or they made an inquiry, uh, not official, but they may have done some asking to certain people to maybe try and see um, if they can get him. So there are all these players. But, but mm. you, you know one thing that you look at at Zisco United, you can actually see the change. Mm. You understand? Because they have that limitation, of course. They cannot go everywhere in Africa and get players. Mm. They still have the limitation of the number of foreign players that have to come into Zesco United. So the change, but, but the change I've, is visible. I've, I've got a feeling that the, the, that the, the David Owino, I don't think is going to be given a renewed deal. I think that uh, from what we are hearing, though, it's not confirmed that the Adonai Tibahezwa has, has left. Marcel Kalonda as well. He's another player who um, possibly is on his way out. Then there's a Japanese who left. So there are four foreign slots available at Zesco. So I think that's why they, they haven't brought in one yet. Um, but th those four, and that's why I think it's the keeper, Jamal Salim. Um, they're also, they may also be looking at a defender. Then midfield, I think they've, they've got enough. Then striker and winger, probably two. So th I think they've got four foreign slots. And they're really pushing um, uh, because uh, Jack Tuisenga was initially, he was supposed to have gone to Simba. But then after there was interest from Zesco United, no, in fact, not Simba, Younger. Then after there was interest for Zesco United, Younger backed off. They got the Burkinabe Yakuba son, who himself was linked to Zesco United. And I was talking to people close to some of these deals. And um, apparently, Sibomana, they, uh, what, there was an offer. Here in Zambia, I'm not, uh, I'm not too sure of the club, of um, 45,000 US dollars. That's how much, because he's a free agent, that's how much he signed on FIWA. So... They are trying to reduce it. And they are after a Zambian who, I think they're going to pay a lot of money. And this is the way. They're going to pay almost <laughs> 70,000 um, US dollars, which, which I think is good that they should push for a Zambian. But you see, there are all these permutations, which I feel are very interesting when if Zesco United bid for this player, um, now Sibomana, because he may not be moving to Zesco, I hear that possibly maybe he go to Forest. Forest Rangers. Or there's a Lusaka team which is interested in him. Just so, say Lusaka dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Just say Lusaka yeah. dead. Yeah. 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 So there are all these, um, uh, there are all these, and there are all these, uh, because Zesco is a huge brand, we, we have to remember. Yes, so all these, sure. Jack Tuisenge, these foreign players, best foreign players, they want to come here and play for Zesco United, and it's good for the Zambian League. However, it's good that Zesco United are bidding for the likes of Kelvin Mubanga. I must say, it's not cheap going to go and buy Kelvin, Kelvin Mubanga. Because you look at how much Nkana charged um, the, the, uh, the, 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 the club for um, water while it was close to $200,000, $300,000. That's how much they charged. So for Kelvin Mubanga, they also value him. And remember that Nkana want the money. So I hope that Zesco will be able to... If yeah, but look, uh, that's what has been holding the talks mm -hmm. between Zesco and Nkana. Um, it's up to Kana to mm. actually, uh, I don't know which word I could use to, is it behave mm. on this one? Because look, there's four months mm. remaining on the Kelvin Mubanga's contract and when this month goes, it will be three months. Mm. Okay, so they may either get something now or Kelvin Mubanga we'll would for wait for, for three months mm -hmm. and walk into Levi Manawasa for free. So. And Ghana needs money like right now, mm. you understand? But, but, so, but the thing is that the, the price shouldn't be, uh, it, it should be Mutually beneficial at the end of the day. I know it's from both parties. Yes, from both parties. You you can't. Kelvin Wanga is a, and this is why we always complain. We always complain that there's how come the foreign guys are being bought for more? Uh, because and it's, our players uh, are going for less. Are going going for less. It's because of the fact that there's this issue whereby the clubs here also don't feel that they can justify to their sponsors that oh we spent just as an example we spent. Three million kwacha on buying a local player. A local player. For the like, uh, one thing I like about Lusaka Dynamos and Biltcon, they're, they're different. They will spend because they already, the, the people who run them are, are, are individuals. So they see the value in saying that we can spend this much because LD are 
uh, are trying to get Alex Monga. And you can see that he's not going to be cheap from power. They got Fayo Tembo. He wasn't cheap. So they value. So Zesco, they also needs to embrace this. So if they want Kelvin Mubanga and Nkana are being maybe rigid, obviously it's price. What needs to happen is that there needs to be a compromise. If it means Zesco playing, paying over two years, I think it, it, that can be okay. Rather than lowering the price and then Nkana get practically nothing. Okay. You are still watching off the pitch here on Kamni TV. We come to your screens every Saturday at 12.45 hours. Mbwezani now, let's move to Nkana. We've, we have seen a lot of issues coming out from Nkana. Players' contracts running out. Other players have already left Nkana. Do you think this is a disaster in making as they are going to represent Zambia in Champions League football? Yeah, the, the challenge is these things are happening at the wrong time. Um, we, we, it's no longer a secret. They, it, it's almost a disaster because, they, of course, in Canada have not come out in open and uh, declaring exactly the situation at the club, but it's clear. Uh, there was some good news yesterday that came through to say players have been paid. Okay, so there's, there's yes, they've been paid. But, <laughs> yeah, they, they have been paid, but then there's only one month more uh, that they owe them. So th that's some development of some kind. This is not a problem. The problem is the contracts of the players are running out. Uh, it is very difficult for, for Nkana right now to discuss the extension because they don't have money currently to, to, to pay the, um, the signing on fees. And one player has already gone, the goalkeeper has already gone to Lumana regions. There's a rumor that Billy could actually be working to cover warriors. Uh, we, we know of Kelvin Mwanga Kampamba. Now, this is a team that is not able as well to sign players because of Steven Adams' issue, which is with FIFA. So you, you, you look at uh, serious challenges that are going right, on right now. And for a team that is play, preparing for CAF, well, if it was anything to go by, um, they could actually cash in, sell the slot, exchange the slots <laughs> with the Zesco United, get something that is actually going to sustain them for a period of time. Unfortunately, it also comes at a change of presidents. Okay, so Kabila could have had his weaknesses, but he, has a, he had the strength in he, making sure that in his own way, possibly, he finds money. Of course, Nkana fans are not going to like this because they feel he actually emptied the coffers of Nkana. So it's not too easy for, for Joe Silamba coming in at this time. And at the end of the day, we are seeing a disaster coming in. Especially that the transfer window is coming close on the 17th of October. It's the club that we've not heard of any signing preparing for CAF. So you, you, you don't get into CAF with the material right now that is there. We know of the four Kenyans that have left. Uh, of course, they have a running contract, but then they need to be assured as they come back to say these financial challenges have been faced. So, yes, the disaster is actually looming. Yeah. So, Pancherino Chama, if you look at um, Ghana Football Club, do you think it will be from the 13th title to fighting relegation with the happenings at uh, Ghana Football Club? Because the situation now mm. calls for them to just be using the, the youth players. You're going to have to promote a lot of players into the senior team to try and play continental football. Mm, I think things have changed. If it was 2004, 2003, I would agree. I would say that, yes, at um, Ghana. But now, I think there's a lot of, uh, what has changed most in Zambian football is particularly social media. And because of these fans, fans are aware of what's happening and they push. So it's going to force the executive, because the executive are now under um, a microscope. It's going to push them to look, to source for money, to look for sponsorship, yeah. to try as much as possible to see. So I think Andinkana is a big brand. As I said, that um, when you look at the likes of when you go to Tanzania, you're talking about Simba. This is a team that can get a sponsor within just two, three months. They can get a sponsor to put in $500,000, $1,000,000. Um, so this is the route which Nkana needs to use. Um, Nkana has been too over-dependent, as well as most Zambian clubs, on the owners, stroke sponsors. So Mopani are not having it easy. They've got their own challenges. They can't concentrate on football. So this is an opportunity for Nkana to say, okay, Mopani, um, uh, we know you are, you are the owners, but we're bringing in uh, these sponsors who are going to come and put in $1 million. Um, I've been talking to a few um, people in, 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 in the market, and these are people, executives at um, companies, and 
I've been talking to some of them and I'm saying that how much would you put like in a club like in Kana? That depends, but um, for us as a company, we can put in maybe $100,000, $120,000, $50,000. Now, if you've, if you've got two, three, four companies, think of putting that, that amount of money. Let's just say, for example, four companies putting in 150000 You have $600,000, which is um, close to 12 million kwacha, which is now, it, it, it sorts out your, if you're going to put that toward salaries, sign-on fee, it sorts out uh, much of your challenges. So I think that there's a lot of hope moving forward. And also, I'd like to comment on um, uh, a lot of Nkana fans have blamed Kabila for Nkana's problems. I think that Kabila had a role to play, but we also have to remember that um, for Nkana to be where it is, uh, despite Kabila's maybe weaknesses, it had to take Kabila, is, um, it had to take Kabila, you know, to, to dream a little bit because a lot of people, we are uh, sometimes in Zambia, sorry, Zambian football, we're, we're very conservative. So when we look at CAF, we say that, okay, we're going to buy this player, this player. Kabila went all out. He went to Kenya, bought Musa Mohammed, who's, who was the vice captain of the Kenyan national team, went to buy um, Duncan Otieno, who was on, one of the biggest players, went to buy Hassan Kesi, who yes. was at Yanga. You see, though, that's being ambitious. And uh, possibly because of this ambition, in Ghana pushed themselves maybe too much. But where I think Nkana should do is, uh, now there's a suggestion that, no, you see Nkana should go back to how it was, maybe go scout for local talent or what they used to do in the 1990s, go to the rural areas. That time is gone. You, Simba don't do that. Orlando parents don't do that. Uh, all the big teams. So what needs to happen is that Nkana needs to be as aggressive, okay. but they need to find... What's your thought, Pancho? I think we've got a caller on the line. Hello, you are through to Off the Pitch, and I'm Augustine speaking. Who's on the line? Yes, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. I've heard you so much about in Canada, the challenge of that your time is going through. Are you getting me? Yes, we can get you, sir. Yes, please. I'm saying this is one of the things I'm going to say. Yes, what's your contribution? Yes, I've heard you so much about the challenge of that the financial challenge of that in Canada is going through, and I've heard that there's a number of players using diamonds, talked about the Gothic Park, but left in diamonds, the Fortinans, the Northern Shore, the Rebet, the Stand Urban, the Eleven Project, is an issue of children on the compound that you're talking about. But I just want to find out, Ghana was crowned as the champions, the third title. Did the title, can this come uh, along with uh, money? Or is it uh, a fighting trophy? There's a prize of money. They are given the money after they become the champions. That could be written to extend the ground. Knowing that they will be going to play contender football. And I'm going to just want to find out. I remember the coach, the man for Tarin, who was there, about the weak part in his part. He talked about winning the defense. Thank you very much, sir, for coming through. So, Punch, you can continue and uh, just about his concerns. We're going to pay something for winning the league title. There's money, but I don't know if they were paid. Uh, the money comes up to 500,000 quarter, that's for winning the league, and then 200,000 quarter for participating. So, in total, um, I think it's 700,000, which is not enough because football is expensive. <laughs> Traveling, um, allowances, accommodation. Is accommodation. There's, there's one thing that you're not mentioning. It's it's not only that. Uh, and kind of right now, at the moment, um, owe a lot to 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 players. This issue of Stephen Adams, which uh, should also be talked about here, because the issue is uh, uh, the question that he asked towards the end to say who are coming in. It's still under FIFA because Nkana cannot go outside and start getting, even local, they cannot uh, bring in players because 
there's that uh, issue of Steven Adams that they need to clear out for them to be free to get the players that they actually want. Otherwise, the money could be there, but then there are a lot of issues that um, money goes to Ghana, needs to sort out the issue of Adams. Luckily, Water World, yeah, I think his issue was cleared out. Yes. So, but then there are a lot of these other players that are with Ghana that are on the lining up to get the money. Okay. We've got another caller on the line. You are through to off the pitch. Who is on the line? Good afternoon. You are through to off the pitch and I'm Augustine. Who am I speaking to? You are speaking to uh, Oshie Shadrack, please. Yes. What's your contribution, sir? Yeah, my contribution this afternoon is uh, concerning Ghana. Maybe the suggestion that we have is that uh, why can't Ghana look for sponsors like Tracy? Why can't they approach Tracy and then make up issues? Because the problem which is leading these players leaving the club is the uh, issue, to, issue, issue to do with the sponsorship. So if they can go to companies like Tracy and share their ideas, Okay, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you for coming through. Yeah, so, Wizard and Punch, we can go the entire day talking. Zanin, <laughs> but uh, due to time, your closing remarks. Well, my, my closing remarks is that Ghana should sit down, look into these issues well. Uh, it has happened elsewhere. If they are not ready to, to participate in CAF, look, um, they can actually notify first the Football Association of Zambia, and the Football Association of Zambia will then notify the Confederations of African Football. The route that they are right now just smells disaster. Yeah. Punch? Mm, I, I'll touch on what the last caller said, that sponsors need to come in. This is true, but one thing which has changed in Zambian football is that previous before a sponsor would come in, give a club money, and that's the end of the, their business. Their business is just that they're happy that a Zambian club or the national team have been given money. Sponsors now are different. They'll ask, what are we getting in return? So it's very important that if Nkana approaches Trade Kings, they have to approach Trade Kings with a proposal in which Trade Kings will reap. I'll give a quick example. Simba in Tanzania, um, they have a, a deal with uh, the more group of companies. One of the, and then they also um, sell similar products as Straight Kings. So one of the, the products they sell is washing powder. So whenever you go on the Simba Facebook page, you see that they advertise, they'll, for example, they advertise the Simba shirt being washed with the same washing powder they do um, because Simba is an important brand. So Nkana can go that way. In that way, the sponsors is, is getting value because they're getting money back. Because Nkana fans will associate themselves with Trade King products. If that is how Nkana will approach it, they'll easily get a sponsor from anyone and um, they'll be able to play calf. Okay, thank you very much for coming to Boyzan and Punch. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, at this point in time, we take a short break and we'll be back on the other side.